if you manipulate a tailor's back into position, what keeps it there? So glad you asked. G'day, I'm Ted Jedinak, creator and facilitator of the internationally acclaimed and accredited Foot Mobilisation Workshops, published author and founder and director of the Foot and Leg Centres in Australia. I help health practitioners, just like you, master new treatment options so that you can have the best tools for better clinical outcomes. It's all about giving you effective choices that fix the problems you see in your clinic every single day. Hey, I'm really excited about this blog, which was prompted by a colleague, Dieter Fellner, who's based in New York, but he talks like a Brit. Uh, Dieter's currently a third-year surgical resident uh, who, after reviewing my article on plantar fasciitis, got in touch with me with some great, thoughtful questions. I asked Dieter if he'd be okay about me blogging my reply because I know many of you will benefit from my answers, and so will your patients. Dieter kindly said yes, so here we go. My article was based on the beam principle of foot function, first observed by Leonardo da Vinci, and how it can affect the level of tissue tension on the plantar fascia when the talus shifts anteriorly, causing a displacement between the medial and lateral beams. Uh, I summarised the article by recommending practitioners reset the talus posteriorly in recalcitrant plantar fasciitis cases to reduce the tension on the affected tissue. But as Dieter asks, and I'm sure you're thinking, what's going to keep the talus there, right? So let me walk you through the relevant steps. Dieter writes, the idea of a medial lateral column asymmetry isn't entirely a new concept. And my response is, that's right, it's not. Dieter also writes, the anterior break in the cymal line has long been associated with the overpronating foot where the talus is adducted and plantar flexed. Put the foot in neutral position, i.e. the talar navicular congruency, and the break is restored. My response is, that's a good point, but I can tell you that it's not 100% accurate. You see, with our in-house x-ray service, we were able to test this thesis because me and my crew had the same idea. Is the break in the cymal line always restored if the foot posture is restored to neutral? And what we found was yes, if the talus was not displaced anteriorly within the ankle mortis, but no, if the talus was displaced anteriorly, as in a true subluxation. Making this distinction in a clinical setting is, can be a bit tricky. I'm still not 100% confident that I can do it after checking and comparing thousands of feet and their x-rays. At best, I reckon, I'm probably about 90% accurate. Anyway, uh, Gamble and Yale in the 70s and uh, Christman in the noughties uh, gave us all the radiological criteria for determining subluxation of the tails. Now, we go through all of the necessary detail in our upcoming online mastery module on biomechanical x-ray analysis, so stay tuned for that. Today's blog, let me tell you, when a foot is in the neutral position, the cymal line will be broken if the talus is subluxed. Restoring the neutral foot position does not restore the cymal line. Anyway, Dieter then goes on to agree with um, the uh, ATFL and its role in preventing the talus from shifting anteriorly, but points out that uh, the, there's the effect of uh, the calcaneus, and it comes to the crux of the, these questions. Uh, Dieter says, um, if a ligament is so loose that it'll allow for talus anterior translation, it's hard to rationalise how any manipulation or mobilisation can help. A good point, isn't it? In other words, Dieter is asking, if I reset the talus posteriorly, what's going to keep it there? Have you ever wondered that? I'm sure you have. In fact, some of your colleagues have dismissed FMT entirely as a treatment option because of this idea that the talus won't be able to stay put. You know, this was a question that kept me up at night in the early days of FMT. Unless we can confidently reset the talus and be assured that it'll remain there, why would we even bother to try and reset it back with mobilisation or manipulative therapies? I don't know how long it took for me to figure the answer out. It was quite a while. And I had to try out my theories on a whole bunch of ankles to see what worked best. The good news is I came up with some pretty good answers that have now been tried and tested for over 15 years. The results have also surprised my students. Anyone who knows the answer gets the same reliable results. So do you want to know the answer? Well, send me your credit card details and I'll tell you. Ah, I'm just messing with you. Seriously, you've got to go through three specific phases of soft tissue rehab to get the best long-term result. Those three phases were beautifully summarised in Michaud's great text, Foot Orthoses and Other Forms of Conservative Foot Care. To paraphrase his work, the three phases of soft tissue rehab are 1. Stretch, 2. Strengthen, and 3. Stabilise. The other key factor to consider is the natural replacement of old damaged cells with new healthy cells. 
Now, the Scandinavian studies by Kier et al., and uh, they tell us that collagenous tissues, ligaments, joint capsules, naturally take around six weeks for that replacement cycle to occur. It's amazing what you can learn when you can inject radiographic isotopes into living humans. Huh. So, imagine we've got a talus displaced by up to five millimetres. Now, at this point, I'm going to declare that what I'm about to describe is based on 20-plus years of anecdotal observations and not double-blinded, randomised studies. So if you need that evidence uh, from you know, randomised controlled trials, you may as well switch off now. OK, I see you're still there. Great. Thanks for keeping an open mind. OK, if you do an anterior draw test and you can see the foot and tail is moving anteriorly by more than 10 millimetres, you probably have too much damage or instability for the ankle mobilisation to work effectively. But if you have, say, four or five, maybe six millimetres of movement, then I'll show you how to reset the talus, go through those three phases of connective tissue rehab and end up with a strong, stable ankle. You know, this process is particularly useful for your patients who claim to have weak ankles. OK. Now, in phase one of soft tissue rehab, which is the stretching phase, you probably already have areas of the ankle, ligaments and capsule that are stretched. But what you need to find is any trigger points or tender points within the ligaments and capsules, because these are literally knotted up collagen cross linkages that prevent the periarticular structures from effectively stabilising the ankle. So, you find these points and treat them with acupressure. Teach your patient to do this between visits on a twice daily basis. They'll do this for two weeks and it's also really useful to get them to do some uh, trigger point releasing in their tip post muscles in preparation for phase two of soft tissue rehab, which is strengthening. We'll incorporate simple strengthening exercises of the intrinsic muscles of the foot and the extrinsic muscles of the foot. We do this with simple uh, toe scrunches and heel raises. Now, I know you can be more specific and technical with the exercises that you use, but we use these two exercises because patients can do them while cleaning their teeth. And this ends up becoming a new habit linked in with an existing habit, and that dramatically increases the compliance rate. Exercises always work better when they get done, so make them easy to do. Uh, these strengthening exercises get done for another two weeks before starting phase three of soft tissue rehab, which is stabilising. In this phase, we need to improve the communication between the mechanoreceptors around the ankle and the brain so that the brain can tell the right muscles what to do at the right time. We do this using proprioceptive stimulating tools like the activator, as well as balancing exercises and gait retraining activities. These activities continue for a new six-week period so that all of the related stabilising structures can be trained and respond to the new forces while the old cells are being replaced with new healthy cells. So, in summary, Dita, the talus gets mobilised posteriorly in a more, to a more optimal position and then by using the three phases of soft tissue rehab, we get to restore a more efficient functioning status. Proprioceptive retraining plays an important role in those long-term improvements too. Now, Dita does also refer to uh, um, ankle bracing and uh, surgical, surgically repairing damaged tissues and these are appropriate for seriously damaged ligaments, no doubt. But if you have a patient with a lesser degree of damage or injury, then following the three phases of soft tissue repair in conjunction with tailor mobilisation or manipulation, I know you'll help a lot of people with ankle problems. Thanks heaps, Dita, for your questions and your willingness to share your thoughts with colleagues. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions for me on this subject or any other musculoskeletal issues, please contact me at ted at footmobilisation.com. If you're watching this on U-Book uh, or Facetube, please hit the like button if it's been useful for you. And if you think a colleague would benefit from hearing this stuff, please share it with them because it means that they will be able to help and consider more options for people with ankle problems. Until next time, serve with spirit, consult with care and help more ankles today.